So we've seen how we release estrogen and progesterone. These are two different hormones and they have very different effects. Estrogen peaks in the first half of the women's cycle and progesterone peaks in the second half. Estrogenic effects are really varied. There are estrogen receptors in a lot of different tissues. One of the really important things about estrogen is that it is a growth promoter. So what that means is when you're thinking about division of cells, you have, say, you have a cell here, this is the clock, it's got the G and the S phases, and it's going to then divide and create new cells at the normal rate of whatever that tissue is. A growth promoter is going to come in and it's going to tell that cell cycle to speed up. And so now you're going to get much faster proliferation, which is going to mean that that tissue is going to grow. So estrogen in the selected cells is pro-proliferation, causes growth of ovarian cells, growth of that endometrium, growth of breast cells, growth of pubic and underarm hair, increases the growth of skin. Women just really have a plumper skin than men. Increases the growth of osteoblasts. So women actually have better calcification in their bones during their reproductive years. Now, when estrogen goes away during menopause, that's when women can get osteoporosis. And then the last proliferation that we need is vasculature. When estrogen is high, women can grow increased blood vessels. And when you think about that, if you think about a pregnancy, we need that enhanced blood flow and oxygenation between the placenta and the uterus. So we have those blood vessels that grow into and beside each other. So that allows for the transfer of nutrients and oxygen into the placenta. The uterus is not the only part of the body that's going to respond to this vasculature increase. And women sometimes get these things called spider veins after a pregnancy. And they're just little, you can look them up if you don't know what they are, but they just look like little networks of capillaries. And that's because while the woman was pregnant, there really was growth of these capillaries and blood vessels. So proliferation is great for certain cells that we want to have growth in, but there are also times when we don't want growth. So if you have, for instance, an ovarian cancer, you don't want it to grow more quickly. So you would really want to suppress or decrease estrogenic effects. So these proliferation effects, there are more tissues than I have here, but they have a good side and a bad side good for sexual development, bad if you have cancers. We also see that estrogen causes an increase in immune and inflammation function. If you think of the immune system and inflammation are really the same thing. They're just two sides of the same coin. One of the ways that your immune system works is causing inflammation. So anything that is going to drop down the immune function is going to also drop down inflammation. Anything that increases it is going to do both as well. And this is why women tend to have more immune system disorders than men do. Multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis are of higher rates in women. We also see with estrogen levels that we get an increase in HDL and a decrease in LDL. So this is why women are less likely to have MIs than men are. And we also have pro-clotting. So with the estrogen around there's an increased clotting risk, which if you have a high stroke risk is gonna be a problem. We also have neuronal effects. We have estrogen receptors on our neurons and depending on which neurons they are, estrogen can increase sensitivity to pain. It can change your sleep cycle. It can definitely cause migraines if estrogen levels increase and decrease rapidly and the decrease in estrogen before a menstrual period can also have mood effects and cause premenstrual dysphoric disorder as well as migraine. So those are the estrogen effects. The progesterone effects are different. And remember that during the month, we started with higher estrogen, which went down. And at the second half of the month, we started with progesterone, which then went down very quickly right before the beginning of the menstrual period. So progesterone is for a couple of these opposite of estrogens. So it decreases the immune function and inflammation, and it suppresses proliferation in some of the cell tissues. So it suppresses cell division in ovarian cells, in the endometrium of the uterus, and in skin cells. 
So this suppression of proliferation does what we call opposing estrogen effects. And you have these at different periods of the month. So they're causing these proliferative effects to go up and down in a normal physiological way. If you look at the tissues that are suppressed here, we've got ovarian tissues, we've got uterine and ametrian, but we do not have breast tissues. So breast tissues are not suppressed by progesterone. That can be a problem because if someone has a lot of estrogen, they're growing ovarian cells, they're growing endometrial cells, and they're growing breast tissue. If they have a cancer in any of those, the progesterone can decrease the cancer growth in the ovary, decrease the cancer growth in the uterus, but does not have the ability to decrease cancer growth in the breast tissue. And this is going to be important when we talk about hormone replacement therapy during menopause. So we have the suppression of proliferation or opposing effects from estrogen in some tissues. We also have a decrease in immune function and inflammation. And this is because during pregnancy, you don't want a high immune function because you don't want to attack the fetus. The fetus is a different organism from you. Your body could recognize it as an invader and you don't want it to do that. This also explains why women with autoimmune disorders like MS tend to have decreased symptoms or decreased number of flares during a pregnancy. While progesterone has opposed all of these effects so far, it does not oppose clotting. It is technically pro-clotting, but at a very low amount. So there are only some instances when someone is at extremely high stroke risk that we would be concerned about the pro-clotting effects here. Again, progesterone is going to have neuronal effects. It can be neuroprotective and decrease death of cells. So that is awesome. We love that. But it also has complex mood effects, which could be good or bad. So these are the different effects of estrogen and progestogens, and you're going to want to know which are which because different contraceptives and different hormone replacement therapies are going to have different effects based on which of these hormones predominates.